hey, thanks for tuning into this short video. Hopefully after this video, you'll have an idea of what I enjoy thinking about and some of the things I've been working on. Before I begin, just a little bit about me. My name is Ben Chesney. I'm a grad student at UCLA and I work with Mike Hill in Equivariant Homotopy Theory. Now, the main theme of my research is the following question. What are NK operads and what properties do they have? Roughly, you can think of an NK operad as an EK operad that also encodes normal maps. One of the main motivations for wanting to understand these kinds of operads is because ever since the Hills-Hopkins-Ravenel solution to the covariant variant one problem, norms have been an important part in modern equivariant homotopy computations. The hope is that better understanding these kinds of operads would lead to better understanding of objects with normal maps. So over the next few minutes, I just want to first give you a bit of a background on and infinity operands, and then I want to talk about some of the work that I've been working on towards understanding NK operands. Now, I have a bit of confession to make. I mean, speaking like NK operands are a well-defined thing, but they're still a work in progress. I will talk a little bit about why maybe it's a bit more harder to define these things than what you might initially expect. So first, some background. Uh, and infinity operands were developed by Bloomberg and Hill in around 2015. Essentially, they're an equivariant extension of E-infinity operads. To give you an idea of what N-infinity operads involve, let's just first remember what E-infinity operads roughly encode. So the idea is that an E-infinity operad encodes in some way n airy multiplication maps plus homotopy coherence data between these maps. N-infinity operads encode the same information, but they're also meant to encode the extra bit of information of normal maps. So what are norm maps exactly? It's probably best to think of norm maps as twisted multiplication maps, at least for this video. By this, I mean the following. A regular multiplication map or an n area multiplication map would be a map of this form. Here, these are objects in topological G spaces. Here we use the canonical G action on the product, which is just G acts on each separately. Here, the map is G equivariant. So, in G top, there's actually more than one G action we could put on a product. Alternatively, we could also have G permute the factors in some way. So maps of this form are what we're going to call norm maps. Essentially, they're just multiplication maps where G can also possibly permute the inputs bit. Now, just to be clear, there's more than one kind of n-infinity operad. This is in stark contrast to the infinity case where up to a homotopy at least there's only one. This comes from the fact that we aren't assuming that our n infinity operands have to encode every single possible norm map. Instead, we have a range where at the lower end we have operands that encode no norm maps, which are essentially just E infinity. And at the other end, we've got ones that encode everything. In fact, the homotopy category turns out to be a finite lattice where each object is completely determined by what possible norm maps it allows. Okay, so that was n-infinity operads. So what's the idea of n-k operads? Well, just like n-infinity operads, they're meant to encode a range of norm maps as well as multiplication maps. The difference between the two is that just like e-k operads don't have a full homotopy coherence data that an infinity operad does, the n-k operads will also have sort of truncated version of that. A basic example of an NK operad is an equivariant little disks operad. This is a fairly straightforward generalization of the usual little disks operad. Here instead we have a little disk D of an orthogonal G representation V. Little disks operad is then just you take an N disjoint union of little disks and you embed it into one little disk. Group action is just given by conjugation. Now, EK operads can be defined as something weakly equivalent to a little disk operad. So you might wonder whether this would just naively extend to the NK operad definition. It turns out that this isn't quite enough. There are other N infinity operads that aren't equivalent to any little disk operad. So this tells us that defining NK operads as equivalent to little disk operad isn't quite enough. We won't be able to capture possible possibilities for norm maps that we want. So this is something, something I've been thinking about and I would love to talk about further. So feel free to come talk to me uh, about this during the session. Okay, now I'd like to start talking about some of the stuff I've been working on. So first of all, EK operads have this property called additivity. 
and in some sense, additivity is sort of a defining property for them. So it'd be nice to know if NK operads or at the very least little disk operads have a similar property. So let me explain the additivity first. For operads, um, there's a tensor product with a Boardman weight tensor product. So without going into details, you can think of it as the universal operad that interchanges two operatic structures. So in particular, if you have two operads P and Q and an X algebra, if this is an X algebra, and, sorry, Q algebra and P algebras and vice versa, this is the same thing as saying X is a P tensor Q algebra. So there's a classic result by Dunn that basically says that if you've got two different little cube operads, the tensor of that is the same thing as if you just added the dimensions to the little cube operads. So one of the things I've managed to do is extend this to the equivariant little disk operads. The difference here is that because our little disks are on representations of G, it turns out that the tensor of the operads is the same as the addition of representations. Now I should mention that the little disks are the natural option in the equivariant setting since cubes lack the symmetries to really will be valid for every single group. Now I'd love to talk about this more, so uh, come and talk to me during the session. The proof of this actually was a little bit trickier than you might expect. There's a few big challenges that I had to get around. First one is that the boardman voigt tensor product is not homotopical. So even if we think about this non-equivariantly, the little disks are equivalent to little cubes, but this doesn't then give us a little disks additivity theorem. And also, even at least there's no published proof that directly gives you a comparison between the two operads. Also, the original proof heavily relies on the fact that products of rectangles are rectangles, which is not true at all for disks. So yeah, there was a few things I had to get around, and the solution turns out to be satisfyingly geometric, actually. So I'd love to talk about this. The second thread of research that I've been thinking about is co-induction on NK operads. So co-induction on operads is you just co-induce every space separately, and the fact that co-induction is laxminoidal gives you the operatic structure. So it turns out N infinity operads are closed under co-induction. So it's perhaps natural to think that NK operads should also be closed under co-induction. Of course, at the end of the day, this will depend on how we end up defining NK operads. Maybe this isn't a property we will want at the end, but at the very least, it's interesting to think about. So I haven't mentioned this yet, but whether an equivariant operad encodes normal maps or not depends on what kind of fixed points it has. It turns out that the co-induced little disk operads do have the correct fixed points. Moreover, you can figure out formulas that uh, describe these fixed points in terms of the fixed points of the uninduced uh, little disk operad. So this lets you figure out what kind of norms the co-induced little disk operad uh, parameterize from the original ones. So let's just quickly go over an example to sort of illustrate what this looks like. So for this example, let's take sigma to be the one-dimensional alternating sign representation for C2. Now, the little disks operate over sigma uh, parameterizes C2 accurate twisted maps of this form. Uh, Mike actually has a paper that goes, about, goes into this in quite a lot of detail. And so it turns out that the co-induced operator encodes multiplication maps of the fo this form. So that this uh, form is fairly restrictive, particularly there's no wedge products over any of the co-sets between the trivial one and the whole group. Now, lastly, I just want to give you an application of some of this stuff. So recently, Baojui Hill, Lawson, Xu, Zheng have defined these quotients of norms of MU. They've been looking at these uh, because they've got to do with the equivariant commodity homotopy story. So you can show that these uh, quotients have the structure of an algebra of those operads, and so they've got normal maps from the previous slide. So this brings me to my last talking point. Um, if you want to talk about this or other possible applications, then I'd be more than happy to talk about it during my session. And just, just saying what I'm working on now, so the first thing is I'm still working on how to define NK operators, in particular make more abstract models for them. I'm also thinking about how to extend the additivity results to sort of general NK operators. So um, always on the lookout for more possible applications of NK operators.